a lot of my followers talk to me about the Yellowstone bison. And I, Doc has actually been up there, worked with the herds um, at Yellowstone National Park. Could you tell us just a little bit about um, the Yellowstone bison and maybe their genetics a little bit, Doc? Because lots of people are always curious about Yellowstone and, of course, it being one of the great places where the bison roam. Well, the bison of Yellowstone, uh, a good thing about it, that's, a, that's an old, one of our older herds in the, in the national uh, or nation's refuges. And uh, it started with 25 head. And then they added a few bison a long way. Some of those had cattle genes in them that were added. They didn't know at the time there was an issue, but now we're seeing that. But through time, bison will eliminate those cattle genes. I've tested my own herds and seen, and, and when I was chairman of the NABR, I watched a lot of people's herds after two or three generations at certain alleles where the, the cattle genes were, some of those would completely disappear over time. And basically that's a lot of what Yellowstone has done. Over time, uh, they have eliminated most of their cattle genes. I'm sure there's some still on there if you do the complete genome, but you know that, that's not the issue. The great thing about the Yellowstone bison is they were selected and they are awesome bison because if they had a sick or a weak one or a crippled one or a, or a bad genetic issue, guess what? The bear and the, and the wolf took them out because that was easy prey because they were crippled or they were weaker, they weren't as big. So these bear and these wolves have basically selected an awesome set of bison. Uh, and so that's basically what our breeders are doing, the same thing. We get criticized for it, but we're doing the same thing as the bear and the bison. We're trying to produce a good product, a healthy product, and an animal that doesn't have genetic issues. So when I talk about the NABR, and I talk about all the things that we do, and you kind of see a little glimpse of, of what we do, we're bringing Big Joe over here to make sure that, um, you know, he's not shooting blanks basically, and that he is fertile. All these things that we do for bison, and what um, Doc just explained to us, is to keep the genetics of what these bison have today. We can't go in the past. We can't change all of that. But what we do now, we can we can control what we do now by taking these hair samples and sending them off. Basically, all the efforts that we do uh, and that we try to do is to keep the genetics of what we have today and try to, um, I don't know if the right word is restore, but strengthen it, strengthen it. and uh, because they did go through a, a tough time in the late 1800s, 1900s, and what we have now, we have to keep a hold of that and make it better. So I encourage uh, the North American Bison Registry. Um, I've got my registration papers back, and I'm going to register all the rest of mine, and I know Doc does it too, so we do encourage that. And if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me uh, first, but Doc obviously knows a whole lot more than I do. You can reach out to uh, Doc, and I'll put the information in the video in my description. So, But I just want to make a quick comment and say thank you to Doc. Um, you see him through my videos, but I uh, I appreciate you for everything that you do for me, honestly, and, and helping me. I learned so much from, from Doc, and um, there's a lot of producers out there that can learn from him and that have learned from from Doc, because you've been doing it since the early 90s, huh? Uh, 96. 96, yeah. <laughs> or 93, I'm sorry, but we got our bison. Yep, first first set there. Um, but anyways, I just want to thank you for, for your help, and I'll try to pass whatever I learned from him on, and so, uh, but it all starts with, with with things like this, and this is this is where it begins, um, keeping, uh, keeping the genetics in our bison.